Da 170 anni noi di Cassa Depositi e Prestiti investiamo il risparmio degli italiani nel domani del paese. Noi di Cassa Depositi e Prestiti siamo con l'Italia, oggi più che mai. Pedalare guardando il mare. Gustare. In Liguria, poi. Da ragazzi ci trovavamo tutti i giorni nello stesso posto, senza il bisogno di darci appuntamento. Siamo cresciuti insieme, proteggendoci dal mondo e alimentando le nostre speranze. Riuscivamo sempre a sorridere. La vita ci ha poi divisi. Siamo andati lontano, in quel mondo col quale avevamo imparato a parlare. Abbiamo continuato a portare dentro di noi la voce gentile della nostra terra ogni volta che ci sentivamo distanti da quelle giornate trascorse insieme. Poi alla fine siamo tornati tutti qui, nello stesso posto, senza darci appuntamento per raccontarci le distanze e ricordarci quei giorni che ci avevano uniti nel tempo. Ci ritroviamo abbracciati a questa terra che accoglie tutti. Abbiamo imparato ad aiutarci e a non smettere di stupirci. Ora che ci penso, non abbiamo mai smesso di sorridere. Da 170 anni noi di Cassa Depositi e Prestiti investiamo il risparmio degli italiani nel domani del paese. Noi di Cassa Depositi e Prestiti siamo con l'Italia, oggi più che mai. Pedalare guardando il mare. Gustare. In Liguria, poi. Da ragazzi ci trovavamo tutti i giorni nello stesso posto, 
senza il bisogno di darci appuntamento. Siamo cresciuti insieme, proteggendoci dal mondo e alimentando le nostre speranze. Riuscivamo sempre a sorridere. La vita ci ha poi divisi. Siamo andati lontano, in quel mondo col quale avevamo imparato a parlare. Abbiamo continuato a portare dentro di noi la voce gentile della nostra terra ogni volta che ci sentivamo distanti da quelle giornate trascorse insieme. Poi alla fine siamo tornati tutti qui, nello stesso posto, senza darci appuntamento, per raccontarci le distanze e ricordarci quei giorni che ci avevano uniti nel tempo. Ci ritroviamo abbracciati a questa terra che accoglie tutti. Abbiamo imparato ad aiutarci e a non smettere di stupirci. Ora che ci penso, non abbiamo mai smesso di sorridere. Eccoci, benvenuti. Welcome, welcome to uh, uh, Rimini at this special edition of the meeting. Thank you very much for those of you who are uh, here with us in the audience. Thank you very much to all uh, of you who are connected. There's many countries that are connected with us. Uh, and thank you very much to uh, all of you that are following us live on TG, uh, on Sky TG24. Uh, Now, there, is, um, there has been many complicated years of relations between uh, the regions and the state. Even in the uh, uh, recent months, um, Italy and uh, the world have been suffering from the pandemic, which have put to test the relation between uh, uh, the regions and the states, which need to interact with each other. Let's try and find out if uh, today After what we have been experiencing, uh, we can uh, remedy, uh, we can put them back together, and uh, we can uh, go back to what the uh, head of state had proposed to the uh, presidents uh, of the regions. A real collaboration between uh, regions and the state is a real cornerstone of their independence. This is what the uh, president of the Italian Republic said. Today, we will have some distinguished speakers with us, uh, Professor Sabino uh, Cassese, Emeritus Judge of the Constitutional Court of Italy and Professor of Global Governance at the School of Government, Luis Guido Carli, the President of Emilia Romagna, Stefano Bonaccini, Massimiliano Federiga, President of Friuli Venezia Giulia Region, Maurizio Fugatti, President of the Autonomous Province of Trento, um, Giovanni Totti, President of Liguria, and Luca Zaia, President of Veneto Region. I will ask Andrea Simoncini, Vice President of the Meeting for Friendship Amongst People Foundation, full professor of constitutional law at the University of Florence, to give us a short outline. Thank you very much.
Good morning to uh, um, all of you who are here in the audience. Uh, thank you, and good morning to uh, uh, all of all of you following us uh, on streaming. And uh, good good afternoon and good night to all of you who will be downloading this video. This is one of the greatest news of the meeting this year. On behalf of the uh, meeting and of President Schultz, I really want to thank. Uh, once again, the uh, five institutional speakers we have with us today, four presidents of region and one president of an autonomous province who has accepted this invitation to join, uh, not a celebration, uh, this is not what the meeting uh, is, but uh, an opportunity for dialogue, an opportunity uh, for uh, uh, exchange. And we're going to talk about a topic as already said, which is the um, uh, anniversary that we have forgotten after COVID, as in the 50 years of the creation of uh, uh, regions in Italy. So uh, the meeting wants to promote a dialogue on that. So really thanks to uh, the uh, presidents Bonaccini, Federica, Fugatti, Totti and Zaya. As I said, uh, we're not just here to celebrate the event, but we really want to talk about uh, the uh, this new architecture of uh, uh, the Republic over these 50 years. As was said at the beginning, this architecture uh, is very complex, peculiar. We Provinces and municipalities already existed during the fascist period, and the regions were the uh, uh, greatest, the great new thing uh, brought about by the uh, uh, reform. And this is why uh, it's a complex situation. Two years ago, here at the meeting, we celebrated the 70 years of the Republic. Today, uh, we are celebrating the 50 years of the regions. Oh, why uh, the regions that were set up with the constitutions are not 70 years as well. Now, that shows that um, it was a quite complex at political and institutional and administrative level to set up regions. So uh, we want to speak about that. Bearing in mind uh, what President Mattarella during the 50 years of celebrations mentioned, as in this idea of uh, a, um, a good collaboration, of a loyal collaboration. Loyal loyalty uh, usually is something very rare uh, among human beings, and a loyal cooperation between institutions uh, is a far more complex challenge. Here we have with us today uh, uh, five uh, distinguished speakers, and uh, uh, we needed to have a sort of uh, uh, overture that uh, would enable us to uh, dwell upon this um, um, properly. Professor Sabino uh, Cassese is also with us. He's always been a friend of the uh, uh, meeting. I see him connected. Thank you for uh, being uh, with us. You are connected from home. Uh, it's a great pleasure for us uh, that uh, you are here at this special edition. So, uh, we have asked him to give us this great overture, this great opening, as in to give us an outline of the uh, uh, main uh, topics uh, to then spur a debate, so that uh, everyone then uh, will uh, give their remarks. Let me conclude by th saying that uh, we just didn't need uh, um, a very good opening, but also a uh, conductor uh, 
uh, that could uh, guide us into this dialogue, which is why uh, I want to thank uh, Fabio Vitale, uh, who is a very famous journalist of Sky TG24, and uh, I want to thank uh, Sky TG24 for its partnership uh, for accepting uh, leading this dialogue. So, uh, thank you very much once again to all the guests and uh, uh, Professor Cassese, and I'm going to give him the floor to give us an outline. Thank you, thank you. So, I will count on the orchestra today. Um, as often happens, Professor Cassese, uh, we met at different times. Uh, we talked about referenda, government crisis. Uh, oftentimes, you uh, helped us to understand reality and going beyond it. Now, let's look together. Let's look all together at these 50 years. Uh, give us your point of view. Well, I will start by the first question that you asked. Uh, why are we celebrating 50 years and not uh, 72 years? In other words, why were the regions born 22 years after the uh, uh, um, uh, creation um, of the uh, state? So let's see what happened and let's see the performance of the regions. We are happy because uh, the regions uh, uh, were successful, but are we really happy? And then maybe in the end, we can put forward some proposals. What can we do? So the regions were set up uh, 22 years after the constitutions because the constitutions envisaged regions as a way to integrate democracy uh, through pluralism. Then Leopoldo uh, Elia said that there was uh, uh, an excess of continuity, as in the central state uh, continued to rule, and only the 1960s uh, there was uh, a change in 1962. Um, uh, there was one of the major changes of the uh, second post-World War period, then the movement of 1968, and uh, all political parties uh, then thought uh, that uh, the regions uh, should be made, according to the slogan at that time, to rescue the state. So the regions uh, needed to rescue the state. And we're set up for that. What happened uh, uh, in the past 50 years uh, since uh, uh, the regions have been set up? Now, over these 50 years, Regions played uh, different functions, but uh, um, uh, they were very slow because uh, uh, the uh, first uh, uh, transfer of powers from the state to the regions was in 1972, the second one in 1977, then the national health care system was radically changed in 1978, then there were legislative decrees by Garavaglia in 92 and 93, another uh, um, a change in 1998, and the regions as we know them today uh, were born in 2001 uh, with uh, a constitutional law. But that does not only concern the functions, but also the structures. And the structures were radically changed uh, in the 1990s, uh, where uh, um, the presidents were appointed. Uh, first uh, in the regions. And at the beginning, that was a sort of test, an experiment, which then maybe could also be introduced at state level. So, over the past 50 years, let's say that uh, we can have uh, two different phases. In the first uh, 30 years, the foundations were laid, and then uh, in the second 20 years, uh, the regions uh, really started to uh, work uh, uh, with presidents provided with all different functions. But paradoxically, uh, there, there has been a decrease in uh, com political consensus on the regions. Because at the beginning, 90% of the electorate 
uh, joined the uh, uh, um, regional elections, whereas uh, right now, unfortunately, there is about uh, uh, one third of the electorate and 60% uh, of the electoral go to vote for regional elections. So, in the past 50 years, uh, regional functions have been strengthened, but at the same time, and this is a paradox because it seems contradictory, there has been a sort of uh, weakening um, of the uh, uh, strength of regions, of the representative strength of regions. Now, let's see the performance of regions. Can we say that regions have been successful? I'll make three examples. The first one is based uh, on a quote by Alcide de Gasperi. De Gasperi uh, spoke uh, in January 1948. That was uh, one of the last days of the Constituent Assembly. Uh, and. Uh, they were talking about the statute of Trentino Alto Adige. And he said, the regions will save, but they will be able to resist only on one condition, as in that they show they can be better than um, state bureaucracy. Uh, better, especially in terms of expenditure. Now, this is a, a very good statement by Alcide de Gasperi. Uh, And this first uh, test was not passed by the regions because they didn't show that they are better than the state, uh, especially in terms of expenditure. Then uh, let's say that uh, the regions uh, were uh, uh, created with uh, uh, legislative powers and uh, uh, according to the constitutions, uh, they would delegate their powers to cities and municipalities. What is the idea behind it? What was the idea behind it that there shouldn't be a, a fourth bureaucracy? We had the state bureaucracy. Um, um, uh, the, um, it, two more different types of bureaucracy, and uh, the idea was not to create a regional bureaucracy, but the regions uh, couldn't make it because uh, regions are based uh, on administration. Administration is quite burdensome in regions. And then uh, there's a third test, uh, which uh, has somewhat been forgotten in political debate. In the Constitution of 1948, Article 119 talked about the south of Italy and the islands, and there were special contributions for them. It was thought that the political unity of Italy had not been accompanied by the economic unity of the country, and we wanted to find a solution to that. In 2001, the world uh, the, the word mezzogiorno is in south of Italy, totally disappeared from the constitutions because the idea was that the regions could unite the Italian state, which unfortunately was not the case and is not the case. There is still a strong gap um, between uh, um, northern regions and southern regions. So what should we do? The first thing to consider in a very accurate way and not in a superficial way, as this is often the case, is the number of regions. Before writing the Constitution, the first constituents thought that regions uh, should be maximum 12 in number. Then, in the Constitution, there were 15 plus, plus five regions, five with a special statute. And how were, they, how were they identified? They were identified based 
on uh, surveys that were made by Pietro Maestri and Cesare Correnti, uh, two distinguished figures uh, who laid the foundation, the statistical foundations of Italy, and uh, had taken example from the military organization uh, of uh, the Roman Empire as in the military Roman legions. As Redcliffe Mode said, the author of the report leading to a radical change of the English self-government, of the British self-government, in 1969, he said that territories no longer reflect um, the working patterns and living patterns. And an expert uh, like uh, Emilio inspired the lead, the League or other MEPs then dealt with the problem of the macro region. So the point is what is the relation uh, between the regional administrations and uh, uh, the citizens' needs? How can regions meet the citizens' needs? Then there's a second problem. Today, the state is still playing some functions, but maybe should be uh, transferred to the regions and vice versa, because there is some functions now played by the regions which should be transferred back to the state. Healthcare, for example. Why do we talk about a national healthcare system? national, I mean, uh, because regions and the state should uh, collaborate together, whereas the healthcare system is the sum of 20 different regional healthcare systems, which implies costs, and we've seen that during the pandemic. Now, the third problem uh, concerns the conference state and regions. This is the place uh, where uh, uh, cooperation could be achieved between the state and the regions. Why uh, is the conference not used for that? I've been uh, in the Constitutional Court for nine years, and uh, at the beginning, the court, Constitutional Court was a court of rights, and then it was transformed into a court of conflicts. Clearly, there must be uh, differences that regions imply autonomy, independence, which means that regions must be different. But the right way to go um, is the right way to go just to talk about taxes. Is that really the right way uh, to proceed? And uh, uh, now I want to um, convey a message to all uh, politicians. Regional elections as a way to uh, measure political consensus at national level. Is it right to do so? Is that the right way to talk about regional elections? Or maybe by uh, doing that, uh, we are taking the regions to uh, talk about the national government, which is not the case rather than acknowledging that regions should represent uh, pluralism and autonomy and independence. Now, this is my hope. I proactively uh, participated uh, in the 1960s and in the 1970s in the uh, uh, creation of the regions, and I'm not very happy with the work that has been done. So I really hope and I call the speakers who are here with us today to think about that and to act accordingly. Thank you. Thank you very much for your food for thought, Professor. President Bonaccini, following up to what Professor Cassese said and what you've always said, as in the need for overcoming opposition criteria. Can you tell us exactly uh, what that means, uh, uh, how you want to implement uh, this idea? 
Thank you very much and uh, good morning to you all. Thank you for inviting me here. Thank you to the uh, uh, meeting organizers. We met during the pandemic and we decided to make a bet together as we've been cooperating for many years on the meeting. Having heard from you uh, uh, this, uh, this morning, uh, I think that this meeting is uh, working much better than you could even imagine. Um, my regards to uh, the other presidents of the uh, region, uh, as well as to Giovanni Totti, who is also the vice president of the conference that I've been chairing for the past five years, and uh, uh, Maurizio Fugatti. I'm the only one uh, uh, from the uh, center left and all the others are from the center right. And that was, uh, this, it was the same way last year. Uh, let's go back to what Professor Cassese said. And I'll try to be as short as possible. So, the uh, celebration of the 50 years of uh, uh, regions with an ordinary statute. And that was celebrated with President Pattarella uh, some weeks ago in Rome. And uh, um, uh, we agreed on what the President said. I submitted a document on behalf of all the uh, uh, presidents of the region and the two autonomous provinces, uh, forgetting all the political and regional differences. And uh, we were right to do so because when you lead an institution, you also lead it on behalf of those voting you and of those not voting you. For the past five years, I've been chairing the conference. 95% of cases with four different governments. If there's something odd in this country, uh, now that's the uh, oddity, as in the, the, the stability of the government and uh, its ability to implement what he wants to do. So, four different governments where all the political parties uh, have been uh, alternating at the government and at the opposition. We have provided uh, uh, favorable uh, opinions, uh, even upon unanimity. During the pandemic, talking about loyal collaboration, because facts uh, overcome opinions, I want to remind you that 95%, even more than the uh, hundreds of uh, uh, regional decisions signed by the regions were in line with uh, the uh, national decrees uh, issued by the government. So the regions were really collaborating in a very loyal way with the government. Definitely, in Italy, there's 20 very different regions uh, in terms of uh, economy, society, uh, geography, number of inhabitants, and political government, political party. But uh, we tried to set aside any difference uh, among us to be in line with the government. But the pandemic itself, as showed in Italy, which has performed much better than any other Western democracy, as we have seen, had there not been the contribution and the involvement of the regions, no government could have tackled the pandemic the way we have done. No central government can do it on its own. With reference to the recovery fund, we challenged the government positively. We submitted a proposal based on the fact that this extraordinary opportunity for Italy to uh, increase the GDP and to decrease uh, uh, the problem of uh, uh, loss of employment, of unemployment, uh, uh, will need to uh, uh, spend uh, over uh, 200 billion euros. But uh, if over the next three years, uh, regions and municipalities will not help that, uh, no government uh, will ever be able to uh, implement any projects. Because we have to make good decisions, but in a fast way. 
We don't have to postpone decisions, otherwise they will be useless. Let me add also that the uh, quality of uh, managerial uh, uh, classes is uh, very important in uh, governance. Not all the regions have proved that they were uh, unable to spend money. If we look at the expenditure of uh, EU funds uh, in the seven-year planning period, there's regions like mine that were uh, able to plan very well and spend even better. At the end of last year, 98% of EU funds had already been allocated. Had we had more resources, we would have spent them all. Unfortunately, with a state, uh, uh, in a state, in a country, uh, where uh, not all regions were, uh, have been able to do the same. Some money has gone back to Rome or to Brussels, and uh, no one was able to spend it. And this is uh, a problem for Italy. However, the management of governance is an asset. I and the other presidents uh, ha had to work with four uh, different governments in five years. And this is very complex because if every year the government changes in terms of political parties, then it's much harder to do what you have to do. Um, do regions, uh, don't regions have any fault? No, I mean, regions also have to be blamed, but I live in a region, I think that Cassese is really right uh, on a certain point, uh, where we, we need to be uh, very careful that uh, uh, regions do not have to replace the state. Emilia Romagna um, has always planned, but in Emilia Romagna it's the municipalities and the provinces that govern, and that should be the case throughout Italy. I agree to uh, launch a debate uh, on the review of the number of Italian regions, and I'm saying that as chairman of the Conference of Italian Regions, because there is a geographical imbalance, uh, and uh, uh, there is a problem, uh, oh, there is differences in the number of inhabitants in regions, and therefore the size uh, of regions can make the difference. So in practice, we should start launching a debate uh, to understand whether it still makes a sense to have regions with 10 million people and regions with just a few hundreds uh, people. So I'm ready for that. Last point concerns autonomy. I chair a region which has asked for uh, autonomy as required by the Italian constitution. Emilia Romagna has followed the Italian constitution, has complied with it. Uh, I've never talked about uh, uh, too much about taxes. Uh, this is not by beacon, because uh, that will lead to secession and not autonomy. Uh, we have submitted the proposal uh, asking to manage uh, uh, some uh, competencies uh, out of the 23 competencies given by uh, the constitution. There is a functions which should only be uh, fulfilled by the state and others should always only be fulfilled by the regions. We are not asking for more. Maybe they could give me less money, but with some resources which we can manage on our own. Maybe we are presenters in Emilia-Romagna, uh, but if we could manage resources on our own rather than in Rome, then things will be better. This has been one of the key points in the debate. I personally think that uh, we should take uh, the uh, EU resources because uh, 37 billion for us uh, uh, without uh, giving a debt to our children and grandchildren uh, would be gold. We have a national healthcare system and we need the parameters and rules for all, common rules for all. This system must be strengthened, but uh, if people 
say that in this region, the healthcare system should be managed by Rome in the next uh, years, then uh, all the population of this region will fight against it and will oppose it because we, our regional health system is one of the best around the world. Thank you. We will still have the opportunity to understand uh, the role played by the healthcare system in the relation between uh, the state and the regions. Uh, well, the topic of uh, autonomy is a central one, and it's also one of the main topic of the uh, League, uh, the Northern League. So I go now to Mr. Federica. Federica, you always uh, said that the role of regions should be reinforced from a decisional point of view. So what is missing in your opinion? Well, allow me first of all to say that I partially agree with what has been said so far. I think that first and foremost, uh, regions uh, need to put themselves at stake because certainly over the years, uh, their effectiveness has, has been slowed down, but we need to be realistic and we need to face the reality of the facts. And we know that so far, the uh, responses that regions give are certainly far better than those that the central state uh, could provide. So there is no doubt about that. And uh, also it is important to uh, state and reaffirm that uh, when there are uh, strange, surreal, cut out of reality debates uh, about the fact that uh, there are areas of inefficiency. I think that, well, we should uh, go back to a discussion and uh, see which is the role played by the central state because sometimes there are distortions and disruptions in terms of bureaucracy that can really create a big problem so when it comes to the effectiveness of local authorities. I'll give an example. We have, for instance, uh, resources to create uh, dredgings and uh, let's think about uh, the importance of dredging for our coastal area according to national rules relating to environmental regulations that in my opinion actually have to do only with bureaucracy we can't use those resources or if we do uh, we should spend three times as much because they would like to create some special sort of concrete facilities put in the middle of the sea. Well, but I want to dwell on the details. But certainly sometimes uh, there are uh, problems uh, created uh, by bureaucracy to the regions. So this is a fact. But going back uh, to the notion of autonomy, well, I think that Friuli Venezia Giulia region is a good example of this kind of autonomy we're talking about because uh, we are a region that has some a degree of autonomy. We have uh, fewer partnerships, so to speak. We have uh, private resources to be managed for healthcare systems. Uh, and uh, uh, expenses for local municipalities and local entities and the local public transport. But I think that uh, our model is a very good one because certainly it strikes a good balance with all the differentiations that are needed. We already are a, a region with a special status according to the Italian law, also when it comes to the implementation of uh, rules and regulations. But we are certainly a good model. We had uh, different uh, politicians uh, and certainly, well, in, in spite of the promise that occurred in the past, I must say that good things have been done. I heard uh, um, Stefano talking about uh, the competencies and of uh, provinces and uh, in particular, I must say that uh, we have already consider that because uh, provinces have been largely abolished in our area. But we have made uh, changes sometimes uh, on an impetus, so to speak, because you remember in the past uh, provinces were seen as the big evil, just a source of expenditure, a source of waste. I remember those debates, uh, but today instead uh, we realize that some intermediate levels uh, of management, especially as far as administrative aspects are concerned, well, would be useful and needed. 
say uh, say uh, it, for some reasons and in a certain way uh, provinces were presented as a source of waste but it was a lie i mean well maybe there are other problems and waste sources and slowdowns that are caused by other things because again sometimes bureaucracy hinders the use of resources so very bad things have been done for instance uh, f just for this wrong approach towards provinces I i'll give you an example that is about um, my region for instance when it comes to the road network management well now is centralized at regional level because the provinces that were in charge of that have been uh, eliminated so just for regular maintenance now it's much more expensive per kilometer the maintenance costs are higher than they were in the past when maintenance of roads were managed by the provinces so again we should really think twice when it comes to possible changes and improvements we are certainly open to changes but again we need to understand what is best so we need to be more effective more targeted more cost effective and also useful and at the service of the state we have also done what we could to reinforce the collaboration between us and the state if there are differences it's important to say it clear but this is no uh, obstacle to collaboration not at all i mean it's part of the exchange of the discussion just to, to say clearly how things are i think regions gave a meaningful contribution and i say it knowing what i'm saying so all regions from uh, central left governments to right central right governments they showed that they are willing and able to do things and well certainly we're going to talk about the pandemic but in the second round of questions so please try to stick to my questions because we we're going to have other questions so now i go to the president of the autonomous province of trento so you certainly have a, a different level of independence and have you tried to have a fruitful discussion and exchange with the state with the government in relation to the management of your own area first of all good morning everybody and uh, first of all i would like to thank the organizers for inviting me to this special edition of the rimini meeting yes i do come from the autonomous province of trento that we have been managing for two years almost and i must say that the, for the first time there was a political change uh, when it comes to its managers and uh, there was also a change uh, in terms of relations with the state and the central government well that said i can say that uh, we are like a little state and uh, apart from i mean the currency and uh, the police and some tax issues the province of trento is completely autonomous it has its own resources coming from the taxes paid by the citizens 90% of the taxes paid by our citizens are used and managed by us to fulfill our local needs and uh, we also felt the heavy weight of the crisis this is a fact but still we are pretty autonomous and we uh, really cherish this autonomy and it's very important to us and when Professor Cassese mentioned the Constitutional Court and the fact that sometimes it becomes also a conflict court. Well, when it comes to our area, I think that for us it is natural to look for more autonomy. You mentioned the Gasperi, and the Gasperi was a promoter of autonomy for Trentino region when we were part of the Austrian Parliament, and then when it comes to the Italian Parliament, he was uh, a, uh, also autonomy promoter for us when he was part of the Italian Parliament. So again, this uh, natural vocation towards autonomy, it's typical of our territory. So that said, during this uh, phase, uh, if we really want to talk about uh, the experience of this government, 
we have tried to look for more autonomy. I'll give you an example of what we did. In the middle of the crisis, uh, we tried to say, let's speed up a bureaucracy because, as Professor Cassis says, De Gasper used to say we can be better with the less bureaucracy than the others, so we will be able to better spend and use our resources. So that's how our territory will be able to uh, manage autonomy at the best. So, for instance, in the middle of the pandemic, we simplified the procedures for tenders and other procedures, and the government opposed that, and uh, so it somehow decided to contest that, to dispute that. And then it was another decree issued by the government, the so-called simplification decree, and some aspects uh, that we had already somehow tackled with our measure, well, were somehow taken and integrated by the government in its decree. So we were ahead of the government. They somehow copied us. So I think we should go on that way and keep doing that because the sensitivity of local politicians and local managers with respect to the local needs is certainly different from the central level because uh, well, uh, for us, uh, this uh, closeness and proximity to the territory is greater because, again, the Provincial Council of the Autonomous Province of Trento issues laws that are close to the needs of the territory. And maybe that need is not fully understood by the Italian Parliament. So we need to try to do our best to respond and fulfill to our local needs. So that's our somehow purpose. And usually the constitutional court understands that, even though the central government contests and disputes our rules. And usually the constitutional court has reaffirmed the fact that we were right. Well, if the constitutional court had uh, somehow said we were wrong, well, you would have accepted it. But as you can see, it was not the case. Presi President Totti, you said we should go back to the uh, autonomy process. So we had Professor Cassese and uh, the other guests. Do you have in mind uh, the same concept of autonomy? Because sometimes you do not mean or refer to the same thing because this word has been used several times by many people, but maybe behind that word there is a different concept, I don't know. So you uh, sort of are part of the right center, let's say, uh, political party. What's your take about the concept of uh, autonomy? Well, first of all, I must say that um, the pandemic and the coronavirus have uh, radically changed our lives. And uh, meeting here today almost seems strange and unusual, but still, as you can see, there are unexpected things that can also lead to good things and good outcomes as uh, the meeting special edition, because this is somehow something good that came out of this situation of a crisis. Well, I think that actually, over the last six months, well, probably the country has already changed uh, and uh, we can simply look at uh, the way the relations between the government and the regions are uh, sort of observed and considered today uh, shows a comeback of the importance of regions. So I think that things have started to change uh, and this is because uh, regions have proved to be able to do quality work. And again, when it comes to some topics, I must say that I'm more in favor of federalism than autonomy, I must say, after five years as president of a region. And I think that in the next 10 years, this country should uh, really strive for federalism because uh, otherwise uh, we will be doomed to fail. So, and I'll give you some examples of my statement. 
today uh, the regions uh, have uh, somehow given their contribution when it comes to the healthcare system, but this is right so. It was uh, their role and task uh, to manage the healthcare system during the pandemic regionally, and that's okay. But the Conference on the Regions, uh, regardless of the political parties and belongings, was able to issue guidelines to open up the country again. This is a major change, but in a positive direction. How uh, was this possible? Because over the last few years, regions have been able to produce managers that were of a higher quality, but not just for personal reasons, but simply because their constitutional and electoral rules were such to allow a certain continuity in the work done by uh, regional managers. And uh, I can tell you that I come from a region, the Guia region, where bureaucracy and central bureaucracy procedures in particular have always been a problem. And uh, for instance, we have seen to what extent uh, the bureaucracy managers, those who had been in charge of checking on the good maintenance of the Morandi Bridge, uh, have failed. So again, today we have a more stable political system that allowed uh, a better quality of the regional system, and uh, I must say that we have uh, we have had. Uh, uh, gains over the last few years and um, so added uh, added value gains uh, in our profit and loss accounts uh, so I must say that uh, we have uh, uh, had uh, capital gains uh, so we had a sort of we are not a, a source of waste not at all we properly manage our money and so we had some budget surpluses that prove our good management practices. Those who are in favor of a very strong central state uh, usually think that a very strong central state guarantees a country that uh, somehow applies the same level of services and opportunities to all its citizens, regardless of where they get born in the north and in the south. But could be frank, please, for once, because over the last 70 years of our Republican history, unfortunately, it was not the case, because uh, this kind of central state uh, has somehow flattened down the qualitative level, so bringing it to the worst and not to the best. So we really need to understand, uh, well, that this is not always the best model, because there is no, let's say, upward uh, uh, movement, but instead there is a, a downwards uh, sort of uh, tendency. So, instead of uh, improving the situation in the whole country, there was a slowing down and a worsening in the whole country because of this central state. And considering the huge amount of time that we all had because of the lockdown, I must say that I tried to document myself and I can tell you that, for instance, uh, if we compare ourselves with our countries and you take Germany, I must say that Germany as well, I mean, has a similar history for some ways because it's uh, the result uh, of a very fragmented area with many small uh, city-states uh, and uh, it was very fragmented and then it united. They have a strong uh, central government but also they have a federal system with uh, the lender and, uh, and they are still a very good functioning state. It's not that uh, when uh, Totti, Bonaccini, uh, Fugatti and so on uh, create confusion, not at all, because regions act differently according to their local situations. That's the point of regions. Otherwise, what would be the point? I would be scared to death to know that Muzumeci 
does uh, in Catania the same things uh, that Fugatti does in Trento with completely different situations and context. So local authorities are there to adapt to local re uh, realities and Germany maybe is the strongest state uh, in Europe but we have always accused Germany to impose its visions, views, monetary policies, economic strategies uh, to the rest of the continent. It's the most federal democracy that exists in Europe and they integrated Eastern Germany and they were able to improve the economic level of that part in a much shorter period than what we have done with the south of Italy. And well, their government, their central government certainly has a greater level of continuity than Italy. And yes, and on top of that, uh, territories can also adopt uh, very specific uh, rules and laws. And uh, well, I have uh, one of the greatest uh, port cities of the country, well, the greatest one, Genoa, even if my friend from Tiesto will say that this is not the case. Hamburg is very similar to Genoa, even though Genoa has such a glorious past, but Hamburg in Germany can issue special maritime law, uh, laws and it can uh, independently manage uh, its own uh, uh, port uh, and we can't do that in Genoa and uh, well wrong investments because of that were done in Genoa and so we lag behind now we're not a top port like Hamburg so we really uh, should try to strive for federalism and also having a stronger role of uh, regions governors because we need more independence and autonomy for local areas to better develop the country in a more targeted way. Today we are different not because of the autonomy or the independence or other things but we somehow were able to act in an independent way and sometimes some uh, bad judgments were given, not considering the good repercussions. This is uh, uh, your uh, own view, and uh, I want to sort of uh, know what you think about what Ewin said, and in particular to what Totti said. What do you think about the German model? Would it be possible maybe to adapt that kind of uh, architecture to Italy? First of all, thank you for inviting me and uh, congratulations to all the organizers. Best regards to you all and best regards to the uh, youth of uh, the meeting. There's many youth coming from the Veneto region also. Let me also say that I'm being very happy to uh, listen to Professor Cassese. We need to be uh, aware that we are complicating what uh, can really be simple and this has always been the case for Italy. I believe that the autonomy is the only way out. Then it's um, legal experts uh, that uh, uh, have to uh, dwell upon that, but to us autonomy is the key. Napolitano, the president, uh, thought that uh, autonomy was the solution and this president was did not belong to our political party but here in this country we need to take on responsibilities in Italy there is many differences uh, uh, not all needs can be met everywhere but uh, it is a country where uh, not uh, um, everyone um, is doing the same thing. I think that we all need to take on responsibility. We need to have more state where we need it and less state where we don't need it. Professor Cassese was mentioning about was mentioning conflicts before.
We gave uh, a continuity to the thoughts of uh, the Father Constituents. In 1948, they used to say that uh, each and every one of us should have the uh, autonomy that they deserved. We are the ones who invited the referendum. The Constitutional Court has authorized our referendum. Our referendum was created after a conflict with the government, which has been discussed in the court for one year. And then we were able to make this great referendum in October 2017, which opened up a new course for the Veneto region. We think that autonomy is key and is inexorable. All the Italian regions now now uh, make reference to the uh, uh, constitutions and uh, to the uh, father constituents. One of the most distinguished figures of uh, 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 politics is uh, Father Sturzo. Uh, Don Sturzo was uh, Sicilian. Father Sturzo was Sicilian, and uh, Sicily had a, a pre-constitutional statute, maybe uh, that dated to 1946. Uh, Father Sturzo said that he was in favor of unity, but he uh, was um, in uh, uh, favor of federalism. So it's a strange today to talk about a central state, which is doomed to failure because uh, competences are not allocated, there's no efficiency, uh, there's no uh, 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 decision-making chain. The coronavirus has shown that autonomy in healthcare has enabled us to do many things. The state has some uh, competencies uh, during pandemics, but uh, regions have uh, uh, local uh, independence, autonomy, which has enabled us to be performing, to be successful. Clearly, regions then need to be helped by the state under some circumstances, but uh, the state does not have to complicate our lives at a local level. Someone in Rome uh, has uh, decided to bring competencies back to the uh, state, which would be a total failure. We have uh, a lot of autonomy in healthcare, and uh, uh, if the state wants to do so, then uh, it's uh, uh, the inhabitants uh, of uh, my region that will go to referendum to vote uh, whether they want to be uh, governed by the region or the state for healthcare. Rousseau, in his social contract, uh, said that. Uh, 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 the uh, citizen must be represented. If you don't represent it, uh, you uh, are no longer entitled to do it. The extraordinary thing is that in today's agenda, we're talking about autonomy, federalism, responsibility. Uh, this is what the state is talking about. I think we need to uh, uh, go on. Um, it's strange that uh, someone in the central government has not understood that uh, uh, the autonomy process has by now been launched. You mentioned Germany. Four years uh, we thought about the possible collapse of the Berlin Wall and all the uh, social and geopolitical uh, consequences. In the end, on the 9th of November 1989, um, youth uh, went on the wall and the wall collapsed. And autonomy is going to be our Berlin Wall, will be a new life for Italy. And uh, if someone has not understood that uh, at central level, he will understand it because the citizens has already indicated the way. In the Veneto region, uh, my citizens uh, went to the referendum because they understood the efficiency. Uh, in my region, all municipalities uh, are uh, um, good at economic and financial level. No municipality has failed, as was the case in uh, other regions. So, 
this is the way we want to go on, focusing on autonomy. To conclude, I think that uh, the uh, Constitutional Court uh, has uh, issued a sentence uh, um, in favor of our uh, referendum. It was a referendum on autonomy uh, of the Veneto region. The Constitutional Court, uh, through its sentence uh, uh, in 2015, after one year's debate, uh, has used uh, Veneto uh, to uh, talk about uh, the autonomy of uh, regions. The Constitutional Court is there to uh, uh, ensure compliance with the Constitution. That was said in 1948, and that was said uh, even afterwards. And 72 years uh, after the first, uh, after the approval of the Constitution, and 19 years after the uh, uh, amendment of Chapter 5, it is incredible that someone puts, uh, 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 has doubts uh, on autonomy. Uh, Zaya has uh, quoted Rousseau. <laughs> it's like you say, okay, I read Adriano's memoirs, but he's still playing in the uh, uh, international football team. That, that's another Russo. Professor Cassese, we have heard uh, quite a lot. We have heard uh, uh, the topic, uh, talking about the topic of uh, autonomy. Uh, there's a still a difference between uh, uh, the state uh, and the regions. Uh, what is your idea? We must all acknowledge that uh, a pillar of our republic is autonomy, including regional autonomy. So competencies must not be shared, uh, competencies must not be blocked, uh, no limits to autonomy. No doubt about that. Let me add that autonomy implies more democracy more opportunities for citizens to express themselves and to indicate their needs, to indicate how they have to be met. Therefore, as I said, in the last decade of the uh, past century, uh, the presidents were appointed for the regions, but there was no president appointed for the state. When there was a debate, we thought that we could make a test at the regional level and that soon after we would abandon the parliamentary system at a national level to appoint presidents to appoint a president, even at a national level. And this is where the problem started, because national governments uh, uh, are, at this point, much weaker than uh, regional governments. In any case, I think that regions need to uh, for, stop talking uh, about them as opposed to Rome. We need to make a step forward on autonomy, as in to find out the way in which autonomous regions can cooperate to achieve national goals. And what has been said is very important here because uh, it has uh, highlighted the new role of the conference between state and regions. And here there's two problems. First, why are the regions that go fast not helping the weakest regions? There is clearly a difference in regional performances today. But cooperation, ability to cooperate, does not just mean uh, uh, ability to cooperate uh, vertically, but also horizontally, as in among regions. So how does the Conference of State and Regions can better cooperate uh, with uh, other regions? And how can the conference promote uh, the cooperation among regions? This is the questions to be answered by regions in order to strengthen their specific autonomy. 
And second point, the German uh, regionalism has uh, found out its own uh, system whereby uh, they focus on community tasks, as in they have competences, The different autonomous lenders deal with national topics, as in they fulfill tasks and they play functions that all regions play. Therefore, regions go hand in hand. They um, work all together for a common good. In my opinion, if Italian regions did the same and made this step forward, rather than focusing on conflicts, would focus on cooperation among them, and then would focus on collaboration between regions and the state, well, in that case, if they did that, they would work in favor of a state which is now increasingly weaker. This is why in the 1960s and 70s uh, we, talked, uh, we, we thought that regions would rescue the state. So it's not the regions which are divided, which uh, go on their own, but uh, uh, regions that provide the services at a, at a local level, meet local needs, and can help the weakest regions, and then can uh, help an increasingly weaker state. Now, let's see the reaction by the different presidents. Adopt a region, that would be a nice slogan. <laughs> so, in short, uh, Federica, what's your remark on that? Um, how do you react to uh, uh, what Cassese said? Are you ready to help the other regions and the state? I apologize because uh, uh, I need to go away, but really thank you for inviting me. Mm. Following up to uh, what I said before, I'm, I perfectly uh, welcome the call by uh, Professor Cassese. It's not just my hope for the future, but I believe that the regions during this pandemic have shown that they have a national vision. The Conference of the Regions at 3 o'clock at night has found solutions to uh, uh, meet uh, citizens' healthcare needs and also to uh, reopen companies and to relaunch uh, the economy of our country. And uh, I really remember that um, when only one region had uh, one need, all the other regions were ready to help it, to help it in order to strike a balance in the system. This pandemic has led to the proposal submitted by the uh, conference as in to uh, make it uh, an official institution so that it is uh, uh, a stakeholder acknowledged by the state. Uh, I was uh, uh, MEP for uh, 10 years in the national parliament, but I believe that in the conference, the state and regions can be found, can be found um, uh, real solutions, practical solutions can be found in order to also overcome political differences. And this is out of the need of providing clear and practical answers to the citizens of our country. Thank you very much for hosting me. Thank you very much, Massimiliano Federica. Let's go back to Bonaccini. Professor Cassese said at the beginning that uh, regional elections uh, must not measure the national political consensus. Now there is a great debate at the national level. Uh, after Conte's uh, interview, uh, opening up uh, the uh, 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 alliance between uh, the Democratic Party and the Five Star Movement. Uh, 
What is uh, the future of these two political uh, parties at a national level, in your opinion? I believe that uh, alliances that are made to uh, win against uh, the enemies are totally useless because one, you may win the elections, but then uh, when you have the first problem, you fail. And uh, this has clearly been shown at a, lac at a local level. And the second is that citizens are, are much smarter than we think, and they understand it. And between a copy and the original, they always prefer the original. As in alliances must be made to govern. And I didn't ask citizens to vote against someone, but to vote in for something, in favor of something. And this must be uh, the right spirit of politics. We must not uh, get votes because the others are bad, but uh, uh, because of uh, uh, the quality of what we can offer. In a system political like ours, we have two political parties that were now uh, led in Italy. If they want to have, if they want to give stability uh, to the country, they have to do something. Over the next two uh, years, they need to have uh, an alliance. That is a fair goal, but in my opinion, they had to think about that before elections. In Emilia Romagna, we have shown that we have seen that the uh, uh, five-star movement uh, uh, electorate has decided on their own what to do. The managers have decided on their own what to do because, uh, with the uh, uh, electoral system that we now have uh, in all the regions, you cannot win on your own. A political party cannot win uh, on its own. And talking about health care, our electoral campaign has been based on my proposal to have a, 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 a central um, a public health care system as against my opposer, who was in favor of a private health care system. I think that uh, the Five Star Movement will need to decide where it wants to be, because it can't be everywhere. Let me read the uh, four points uh, that the Conference of the Regions has submitted to the President of the uh, Republic. And I'm saying that uh, as the uh, uh, chairman of the uh, uh, conference uh, and the chairman of a region which is right in the center of Italy, connecting the north and the south of the country. So, overcoming the differences of legislative powers between the state and regions, a complementarity between the center and the periphery to meet common objectives, Institutional cooperation and consultation among uh, different institutional levels, starting from the Conference of the Regions, and the need for having a political agreement that, through the recovery plan, can uh, overcome um, regional differences. This is in line with what the uh, uh, professor called us to do. I'm asking for Emilia-Romagna to have autonomy. I will fight for it, but I feel Italian uh, before feeling um, an inhabitant and the representatives of this region. Fugaci. Uh, can you tell me whether it is possible to have this loyal horizontal cooperation among the regions or do you more need someone or uh, uh, do you need to f help somebody else? I think that uh, the experience uh, of uh, uh, our autonomous province uh, and uh, all the different regions uh, has shown that uh, we have been able to uh, cooperate in a loyal way among us. And we have also shown that maybe uh, at some point uh, our autonomous province uh, could have uh, uh, made some steps uh, forward um, compared to others. But uh, 
it was not right for us to do so. And I think that our cooperation, the cooperation among us, uh, has given good results. Had there not been the regions, today maybe the restaurants wouldn't be open because on that night that Vitriga mentioned beforehand, uh, if uh, we uh, had not decided to adopt some parameters uh, in order to ensure the reopening of restaurants, probably restaurants would have not be reopened. So uh, the president uh, played a fundamental role uh, um, when the government couldn't do it uh, because maybe the government was too strict, too strict whereas the regions were not uh, because uh, we uh, better understand local needs. And the same applies to schools. We all understand that we now need to uh, uh, reopen schools. Today we know that we can reopen schools, but we also have to ensure an efficient transport system because uh, we don't have uh, now um, the uh, um, ability at present to ensure a transport system that can really enable the reopening of schools. So we need to cater for that need beforehand before reopening schools. So I think that our collaboration has been key and we've seen that during the management of the pandemic. So real collaboration and the contribution given by uh, the uh, government uh, is also the result of what we see every day with our own eyes, which is not the case for the central government. President Totti, two questions. First, school reopening. There has been a lively debate on the declaration made by a, a consultant of the healthcare system on the risks of uh, reopening schools and having classes in schools. Is Liguri, Liguria ready uh, to start uh, uh, and reopen schools on the 14th? And then the second question. Yeah, we need to reopen on the 14th of September. Uh, we also have uh, uh, elections in Liguria, so we have also proposed uh, 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 a different uh, uh, opening day. So reopening schools, uh, stopping them for elections and then reopen them again um, is not uh, uh, the ideal. And also uh, the problem of buses. If you can only have 10 people uh, on the bus to go to school, uh, and uh, you need to reopen schools uh, is a paradox. If you, if, if you do that uh, in Rome, it's a problem. Uh, in Liguria, it's a different problem. Uh, we are working on that. Uh, Liguria is doing uh, its best. Uh, we have uh, uh, healthcare operators. Uh, we have uh, uh, Gaslini, which is a center of excellence. Uh, um, for uh, uh, pediatric care. And then teachers have to be sent by the central government. Uh, classes and schools have to be found and paid by the central government. Hopefully, uh, Azzolino will do that uh, sooner or later. But that's a national challenge, and uh, Liguria will contribute to that. Uh, but uh, Cassese Uberales, uh, uh, sticking to the German model, Cassese really summarized that what we are doing, as in federalism, uh, uh, does not mean uh, getting away from the state. Federalism uh, means uh, uh, getting regions and giving them a more prominent role at a central level. So, uh, what about regional elections uh, in September? What effects will it have uh, in the center right and on the national government? I'm quite uh, in favor of, uh, I'm quite federalist on that as well. I think that uh, the local electorate uh, will uh, vote uh, their best. Different regions uh, with different sensitivities uh, have made uh, different choices, but uh, oftentimes uh, uh, they uh, um, agree uh, 
that's because uh, they uh, can uh, uh, interpret things in a certain way. Then there's you, journalists, uh, who will uh, nurture this debate. When I'll go back and be a journalist, I will analyze the votes. But I think that uh, in Liguria, uh, the uh, inhabitants of my region will choose what is best for them. The same applies to the inhabitants of the other regions there. President Zaya. Let's talk about the COVID emergency. Uh, increase in numbers, uh, which uh, give uh, reasons for concerns. Uh, are you uh, prepared to react to a possible second wave? Let me say that uh, we have made 1.4 million swab tests. We are leaders worldwide in doing swab tests. If you do swab tests, you find infections. If you don't, you don't find infections. In Veneto, we are controlling the situation. At present, in the region, there is only six people in intensive care units. Half of them are in intensive care units for different reasons and not for the coronavirus. And then we have 118 people who are hospitalized. Now, talking about Veneto as a region with a high infection is wrong. We are uh, ready to do anything uh, against uh, um, a second wave. Uh, we have uh, uh, many intensive care units. Uh, we have the ones who propose uh, to do a uh, fast uh, swab tests, which was validated by Spallanzani, and which is now the swab test, which is used uh, in the airports. And it was tested first in Veneto. But uh, so let's stop saying that Veneto is full of infections. Yesterday, there were uh, 35 young people coming from Croatia who were found positive. 93% of our people who are infected have no symptoms. And this is very different from the situation we had in February. Let's go back to regional elections. What will be the effects of the regional elections on the Lega? Someone has put in question the leadership of the current leader of your political party. Is that the case? <laughs> Well, this is not a reality. This is uh, maybe a hope for some people. But I keep hearing that every time there are elections, well, I see myself being sort of proposed as a candidate for any kind of election. Well, I come from the countryside. Even I'm not a farmer, I'm not a the child of farmers. I really a lot to do for my region. I don't care about sort of making career in the party or at national level. My story is about managing my region. That's it. So leave me alone. It's your hashtag. Oh yeah, that will be another one equally effective, but I won't mention it for respect to the audience. Thank you very much indeed for your participation. So thank you, Professor Cassese. Thank you to our governors. And well, there is uh, another key up-to-date topic that is uh, as uh, important as the topic of the relationship between the state and regions. Uh, so talking about the pandemic was very important. So I leave uh, the conclusions to Mr. Simoncini. Well, I followed the debate uh, as you did, and I would really, really like to join the thanks expressed by Fabio Vitale, because I think that we had a very, very high level debate. It's almost unusual to have such a, a high level debate. I think that, well, differences were pointed out, but in spite of those, we had a quiet sort of a good idea of the level of collaboration and awareness of the managers of our region. So this is comforting, this is good. And Professor Cassese launched this idea of a collaboration that is not just vertical and loyal toward the state, but also horizontal among the regions. I think it's extraordinary in terms of interest. 
we had a dialogue and a discussion that was really fruitful. Nobody wanted to put the blame on somebody else. Nobody tried to somehow be biased. I think that issues were discussed uh, in a balanced way and uh, the facts uh, were commented upon and I think that really we all got a very positive uh, message that gives us hope. Allow me just uh, to express a remark. How is it so that you can have uh, such a balanced uh, Governors, And I think that this is not an accident that we're here at the meeting in Rimini. I think this is a key feature of our event. And again, I want to thank the organizers for daring to setting up, in spite of all, over the last few editions. And I think about a speech by Professor and uh, former President Napolitano and also the participation and speech of President Mattarella here because this is a place where dialogue is possible and this is a place where it is possible to try to talk to each other and construct things, build things. And to my uh, personal point of view, why is this possible? Because institutions need a civil society able to dialogue and discuss and ask questions, otherwise who should uh, politics report to? Responsibility entails the idea of having somebody to report to and to respond to. And I think that the meeting has always been uh, the right place uh, to make people talk to each other and dialogue and exchange. But, uh, well, subsidiarity, civil society, citizenship, are words that are somehow suffering of some misuse and overuse. Today, we need, and I think that uh, this links really very much with what Professor Cassis has said, we need to go back to the idea of a, a region that could work as a democracy amplifier, civil society, is not enough because we could ask ourselves, is the civil society still there? Are the intermediate bodies still there? There is a connection between communities and individuals. We always need individuals. We always need aware individuals to create a society, a civil society. And in order to have individuals, you need relations. You need a fabric of relations. And this is what uh, the meeting is all about. The meeting was established because of relations, as a result of relations. So debates of this kind can really be fruitful, give us hope and courage, because that's the way we want and need to discuss. I'm sure that with this kind of exchange, we can really do great things and uh, find the right solutions to our problems. So once again, I would like to thank you on behalf of the organizers. I want to thank our five uh, uh, president of regions, well, actually four, and one of autonomous uh, regions. So, thank you very much. And also a big thank you to Professor Cassese, who made this uh, debate possible. And uh, again, uh, as I said, we needed a good orchestra director. And so please, a final round of applause for Fabio Vitale, who helped us wonderfully. He did an excellent job. Thank you very much and I wish you all the best. Thank you. Goodbye.
Da 170 anni noi di Cassa Depositi e Prestiti investiamo il risparmio degli italiani nel domani del paese. Noi di Cassa Depositi e Prestiti siamo con l'Italia, oggi più che mai. Pedalare guardando il mare. Gustare. In Liguria, poi. Da ragazzi ci trovavamo tutti i giorni nello stesso posto, senza il bisogno di darci appuntamento. Siamo cresciuti insieme, proteggendoci dal mondo e alimentando le nostre speranze. Riuscivamo sempre a sorridere. La vita ci ha poi divisi. Siamo andati lontano, in quel mondo col quale avevamo imparato a parlare. Abbiamo continuato a portare dentro di noi la voce gentile della nostra terra ogni volta che ci sentivamo distanti da quelle giornate trascorse insieme. Poi alla fine siamo tornati tutti qui, nello stesso posto, senza darci appuntamento per raccontarci le distanze e ricordarci quei giorni che ci avevano uniti nel tempo. Ci ritroviamo abbracciati a questa terra che accoglie tutti. Abbiamo imparato ad aiutarci e a non smettere di stupirci. Ora che ci penso, non abbiamo mai smesso di sorridere. Bye. 